Hey guys, this is Tara from Sophia Gray here, and in today's video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about becoming an escort. So let's begin with exactly what an escort does. What is an escort? Escorts are usually hired as companions to social events and trips, where they trade their warm and affectionate company for an agreed price. Contrary to popular belief, this does not necessarily include having sex, but more on that later. For now, let's consider why you might want to venture into the world of escorting in the first place. Do you want to become an escort? From the outside, it's easy to see escorting as easy money and fancy parties, but it's so much more than that. It takes time, commitment, emotional intelligence, conversational prowess, and a lot of other skills. Here are a few things you should consider before diving in. Do you have the time to take on multiple new relationships? Do you enjoy speaking to new people? Would you be comfortable being affectionate with strangers? And are you happy to travel regularly? It's also important to note that it takes time to build a clientele. Surveys have shown that most new escorts quit within the first two months for this exact reason. Be aware that it takes time and consistency to make money in this industry. The stigma. Sadly, there's a negative stigma around sex work, including being an escort. There's the unfortunate stereotype that it's unethical if one does any sort of sexual act for money. Despite the societal norms, this can be further from the truth. Sex work is work, and the same can be said about escorting. Escorts provide a service which people need, and no one is harmed in any way. If this is something that you're interested in, don't let old-fashioned thinking hold you back. Escort versus prostitute. Let's clear the air about the difference between prostitutes and escorts. Prostitutes have sex for money, an escort can offer sexual services as part of their package, but don't have to. Most escort packages focus more on the companionship and less on sexual contact. The legal red tape. Okay, so now you're probably wondering if escorting and prostitution are legal. Because these two are different services, the answer is very different. The country or state you work in will define if it's legal or not. In most places, escorting someone to a social event in exchange for money is considered a service. But if you offer sex afterward, it could be considered as prostitution. Your best bet is to do plenty of research on local laws and be careful about the services that you offer. Before we go any further, here's a little bit more about Sophia Gray. We're the largest used panty marketplace. Whether you're looking to sell your lovingly used items and sexy content or make your next kinky purchase, please be sure to check us out now. Now let's jump back into the video. In-call versus out-call escorts. Now, under the umbrella escorts, there are two main types, in-call and out-call. In-call escorts have clients that come to them either at the escort company or your home if you're working independently. Out-call escorting involves going where the client wants. This could be their house, hotel, or another venue. Choosing between in-call and out-call services is up to you. If out-call escorting means going to a client's home or hotel, you may feel unsafe or uncomfortable. On the other hand, in-call services mean the client knows where you live unless they come to the agency, which isn't very private. In the end, you need to do whatever you're most comfortable with. Some escorts do both, agency or independent. The next big question to answer is whether you should work for an agency or go at it alone. There are definitely pros and cons for both. For example, signing up with an agency means splitting your commission, which could be up to 30% of your money. Independent escorts get to keep it all, resulting in a bigger payday. However, agencies offer protection in an existing client base. Some also perform background checks to keep you safe. The one downside to this is that you don't have much of a say in who your clients are. As an independent escort, you'll have a greater freedom to choose who you work with. Whichever route you do take, research escort experiences and see what your competitors are doing for a better idea of what would work best for you. More than sex. A lot of people that hire an escort just want companionship. They might not be looking for sex at all, purely someone to travel with, attend an event, or have a simple dinner date. It's more about intimacy and romance than sex. You may end up being that person's permanent plus one. While this may sound like a lot of fun and games, it can be a lot of work. It's also emotionally and mentally draining, especially if you have multiple demanding clients at once. That's why you always need to take care of yourself. Remember that physical intimacy doesn't just mean sex. It could also include kissing, holding hands, and other forms of PDA. Again, only offer what you're comfortable with. Separating the heart and mind. As an escort, you need to separate your job from your real life. It's about striking a balance between making your client feel important and maintaining professionalism. Make your boundaries clear from the get-go and don't let anything you feel uncomfortable with slide. If something feels off, tell the client immediately. Most will appreciate the fact that you're upfront and honest. Tips for independent escorts. Working independently is exciting and lucrative, but it's also hard to get started. You don't have the luxury of an agency finding you clients, so you have to go out there and secure them yourself. Here's a few tips 
to get you going. One, create your sexy persona or personal brand. Two, get yourself listed in escort directories. Three, become an expert conversationalist. Four, be consistent and be patient. And five, set your boundaries. Tips for working with an agency. While you may make slightly less per client with an escort agency, they do a lot of the legwork for you, like finding clients and negotiating terms. Every agency works differently. Most ask for an application, personal description, experience, and non-nude photos. From there, you may be asked for an interview, and if you're a good fit, they'll hire you and get the process started. So there you have it. If you're naturally charismatic and have love to give, escorting may be the perfect career for you. If you still have questions about what it takes to become a successful escort, leave a comment below. If you found this video helpful, give us a like and subscribe.